Children of the House Part 1. What's, uh, what is this? Is this... Oh, let's just watch it. Last week, I purchased a, a repossessed storage locker. Inside was an old desk, an outdated computer, and a filing cabinet. Is this an analog horror? The letterhead of a few loose documents read, The Office of Julia Liu. From what I could find, she was a successful child therapist in Kate's Crossing from the late 70s to the early 90s. Her obituary stated that she died in December 18, 2015. I do like me a good analog horror. At a glance, this seemed like a typical haul. Typical of not for the collection of VHS tapes hidden in the false bottom of the desk drawer. Hey John, million dollar idea. A way to share a video without waiting on the mail. What do you think? Anyway, as I said on the phone, I think this may be the easiest way to get you up to speed on what I'm dealing with here. And before you ask, no, we don't have releases for the family. They refused to have their likeness involved in any way. However, they did allow me the use of Jessica's drawings. We will need to change their names when we get to the writing stage. Regardless, I think you'll be able to see why I think this will make one hell of a book. The questionnaire. So, prior to our first session, each member of the family was given the standard questionnaire. The results are as followed. The patient's name is Jessica Daniels. Jessica, or Jess, as she prefers to be called, is seven years old. Normal birth, no complications, no no medical issues. She's intelligent, sweet, friendly, and highly empathetic. The child was born in Houston, Texas, where she never had issues with school or socializing with peers or adults. Something bad happened the to Jessica. bought the Clark's house. Sorry. Beautiful house. I love how it's built up on columns. And I'm sure you remember the Clarks from your time here. Sweet old couple. They own that little dive you used to drag me to for lunch. What was it? Oh yeah, the Burger Shack. <clears throat> but anyway, according to her mother, Carol, Jess had a particularly tough time adjusting. She didn't notice anything out of the ordinary until the second week. Wednesday night to be exact. They think it was after midnight when Jess ran into her mother's room screaming. She claimed there were people living under the house. Carol dismissed this as a nightmare, but it started happening night after night until Jess finally refused to sleep in her room. She moved the child's bed to her room, but Jess continued to wake up saying the same thing. She could hear people talking under the floor. Carol made sure- How old did they say Jessica was? Seven? Is it Jessica seven? I think. ...to note that Jess never had problems sleeping in Houston. Adam, the child's father, fed up with having the child sleeping in the room, devised a simple solution. He brought her under the house, tried to show her that there wasn't anything there. And according to Adam, there wasn't. But Jess was convinced she saw something. The girl got into a... That would be such a backfire if you took your kid somewhere that, like, they were afraid of. So in this case, under the house. And you're like, see, there's nothing there. And then they saw some shit. That would be like, like even if it was like coincidental or like a shadow or something that just like moved through. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what it would be. That would be so like. That'd be so unlucky. Where'd the audio go? I was convinced she saw something. The girl got into a ball and screamed until her voice gave out. She's been mute since that day. After a series of tests and multiple second opinions, no physician could find anything wrong. There's nothing hindering the girl from speaking. Therefore, the conclusion is that her condition is mental in nature. The drawings you are seeing are currently her only form of communication. Oh, she's mute now. So all these drawings are how she's talking, right? From observations and the questionnaire, I have a few thoughts on the other family members. Carol Daniels, she's the children's primary caregiver. From what I can observe, she's a caring mother. However, she is deeply resentful of her husband, Adam, for forcing them to move from Houston to Kate's Crossing. Adam Daniels is an obvious workaholic. He spends the majority of his time at work. Dean, her brother, typical early teen. He wasn't happy about the move, but seems to be adjusting adequately. Give me a call after you digest this material. Love to talk strategy. Interesting. End of questionnaire. So the girl 
was afraid of there being shit underneath the house or something scary underneath the house. And then her dad took her down there to show her that there was nothing underneath the house. And then there was something, she saw something and then she screamed and then she went mute. That's pretty crazy.